Clark. General business order of the day relating to the consideration of private senators' bills number 83, low aromatic fuel bill 2012, resumption of second reading debate. Senator Seward. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. I'm very pleased that this chamber is finally able to, to debate this bill, because despite the very serious and sustained efforts to end it, unfortunately, petrol sniffing is still persistent in some areas in Australia. Over the past 20 years, it has been the subject of reports and inquiries, coronial inquiries and research projects. The impact on petrol sniffing on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander individuals and communities is very well documented and well known. Petro the petrol sniffing inquiry, in fact, was one of the first committees that I uh, participated the first committee inquiries that I participated in this place back in 2005-2006. The committee recognised that the situation in terms of petrol sniffing in Australia was in fact dire, and since that inquiry I'm very pleased that there has been considerable movement on this issue. We do now have a petrol sniffing strategy, and we've seen great progress in, in, in all over in central Australia in terms of dealing with this problem. There are, and there are very good programs that are supporting communities in their goal to eradicate, eradicate petrol sniffing. Most fuel stations in the targeted areas have in fact switched to low aromatic um, or non-sniffable or as it's known opal fuel, resulting in a 94 per cent drop in petrol sniffing, and that's according to the government's uh, assessment of the success of the program. But unfortunately there is still petrol sniffing occurring, and there, it occurs in uh, re reoccurring outbreaks. One example that Kalis, which is the Central Australia Youth Link-Up Service, spoke about at the inquiry was an outbreak it, as, when they were presenting uh, submissions and evidence to the latest inquiry, the inquiry into this bill, is that there was an outbreak among 11 and 12-year-olds that spread like wildfire through the Western Desert. A kid came in and showed other kids how to do it, and then it took off. When it, was managed to be, when it was managed to be stopped in one community, one of the kids went to the next community, and it started up there. And then, there was another, and, the, and then there was another 12 kids sniffing there. It took a couple of months of serious work by a lot of people to bring this issue back under control. And that was some of the evidence that Kalis gave to the inquiry. And this occurred because, unfortunately, sniffable fuel is still readily available in some places. These outbreaks are very closely linked to gaps in the, fuel, in the, in the rollout of a non-sniffable fuel. These gaps exist because up until now they, the, we have relied on suppliers signing up to this process voluntarily. Currently the government designates, designates target areas under the strategy for, for non-sniffable fuel use and then works and lobbies uh, petrol station owners to, ha to uh, have opal or non-sniffable fuel replace regular unleaded fuel. Um, other, and of course, communities and petrol stations or service stations can also uh, receive opal um, on request, and this is part of the, the strategy for rolling it out. So that where petrol, but however, where petrol uh, suppliers fail to or refuse to collaborate, the problem of petrol sniff sniffing and its associated horrors um, is more likely to occur, and communities close to where petrol stations have refused to engage uh, with uh, supplying opal fuel. You, you more often associate or can uh, track outbreaks to that. And Kalis provided an example from my home state of Western Australia, where up until um, the rollout of Opal in Laverton in Western Australia, the, the particular owner of the service station there had been refusing to stock Opal for a number of years. Fortunately, there was a change of ownership and the new owners dis, uh, agreed to stock um, Opal. And that, has then uh, also had a dramatic in, uh, impact in reducing the number of stiffers. The association between uh, dealing with petrol sniffing and the rolling out of opal is very clear. <coughs> now, this, we've been gathering evidence on this for quite some time. The Senate inquiry into, the, into this bill has, has encountered firsthand um, the same, the, sorry, the, the Senate inquiry into this uh, bill has clearly documented. Thank you. Has clearly documented the success of the rollout of the Opal Fuel Program. But it's also 
shown firsthand that the categorical rejection of opal fuel from a small minority of what some witnesses called pig-headedness, uh, pig-headed response, is that we're, that's where we've been struggling to roll out opal fuel, and as I've articulated, that's where we have the gaps. This is why we believe that it's very important that the government have the power to mandate the use of low aromatic fuel, um, and we believe it's essential because we absolutely need that power to be able to do this, so we plug these gaps in the sniffing strategy. As of February this year, there are at least eight and possibly more retailers who have consistently refused to stock low aromatic fuel. And evidence collected by the Central Australia Youth Link-Up Services, as I said, Kalis, suggests that these, ref these refusals have resulted in further sniff sniffing incidences, and we heard about that during the Senate inquiry. According to Kalis, there have been areas of concern in Papunya, Lake Nash, Tichakala, Alice Springs, Kintour, Tea Tree, um, Canting Creek, and the, there's, a, there's a number of places. These are the current places that we understand the evidence has come in in the last six months that there's been sniffing outbreaks. So, for example, in Lake Nash, which is very close to a pub over the border in Queensland, Kandura Danji, which stock uh, sniffable fuel. So that sniffable fuel is run into um, Lake Nash, who have, been, who have been trying really hard to deal with the issues around petrol sniffing because cars can carry it into the border and it's really easy to take it in across the border. Because petrol sniffing does not contain itself to state borders, there needs to be a national approach to mandating the fuel supply in designated zones rather than leaving it up to individual states and territories, as in fact the, fe the federal government um, has it previously uh, proposed. We believe it's essential that we have a nationally coordinated response. The Senate inquiry heard evidence to this effect from the Walpree Youth Development Australia, uh, sorry, Aboriginal Corporation, who said, Walpree families come and go across state borders, and so, for maximum impact, we, will, we would like to see this legislation applied to Western Australia, Queensland and South Australia, as well as the Northern Territory. We know that opal fuel has proven effective, but unless the sale of opal is mandated and across the border, re across the border region, there's a real danger of sniffing outbreaks and devastating consequences. So the evidence that I've heard for over seven years now clearly shows that controlling access to sniffable fuel can have and does have a significant impact on the ability of communities to prevent harm coming to their young people. Organisations in Central Australia Health and Drug Services and individuals from affected communities have all voiced their support for this particular legislative approach. And that was very clear through the, through the inquiry process, but also from sustained lobbying over a number of years. This, is, this has been on the cards for a long time because we know there have been significant, significant gaps in the strategy. And I'm not for one minute at all um, <coughs> trying to run down what has been achieved so far. It has been an outstanding program of success. It's one of those real programs that we can all stand really proudly and say across, that there's been across multi-party support for this, and it has been a success. So why not capitalise on that success? We're almost there in dealing with this problem of petrol sniffing. Although we've had this comprehensive um, program um, provided, there, there are um, gaps. And we know that, uh, pet, that opal fuel on its own uh, can't, we know that it's, that it's can't alone achieve the stamping out of petrol sniffing. We know it has to be part of a comprehensive approach, but it's absolutely crucial because it buys that time in order to get in with youth diversionary programs, with other support programs, with drug, with, uh, drug and alcohol support um, programs. Um, we know that it's successful, but we also know that unless we deal with these areas of outbreak that are associated with sniffable fuel, that we will continue to undermine the success. And as, as has been uh, articulated to us, the gains to the Senate inquiry and to me personally, the gains achieved to date through the rollout of opal fuel are critical and are crucial, but they are also fragile. And this was articulated to us during the Senate inquiry. We currently have a generation of children in much of the region who have grown up to be free of a sniffing culture. However, due to what we believe are the irresponsible decisions of some retailers, the sniffing culture appears to once again be rearing its head in some sites. We know from hard experience that sniffing, once established in an effective community, can rapidly spread. It is an epidemic we do not wish to relive. And again, that was evidence from Kalis. 
um, during the Senate inquiry. Through the provision of low aromatic fuel, as I've articulated, is not a solution. It is absolutely critical to a holistic approach. And Kalis, from their long experience in the, in the, uh, in the field, and I think um, senators who have had any dealings with Kalis around this chamber will, will know that they're one of the most respected youth services in Central Australia and have played a critical role in dealing with the issue of petrol sniffing. And as Kalis said, we are doing this we would, uh, sorry, they've been working in these areas. They were, they were saying we were doing this before Opal and we would try all the other measures. You could start a youth program in a community and you would get a lot of sniffers to stop, but not all of them. But once you have Opal in a community, the sniffing stops, stops and then the, the youth programs can really go, go because they are not competing against people who are off their faces all the time. The importance of Opal has been clearly demonstrated. All it has lacked is in fact this final part of the strategy, the final part of the strategy to ensure that petrol sniffing, the, ensure the petrol sniffing uh, strategy has the capacity to proceed in the face of consistent denial from petrol station owners. As, and, as, as Andrew Stoyanowski, um, who was awarded the Order of Australia for his work in Yindamu, setting up the Mount, Youth, uh, sorry, the Mount Theo petrol sniffing prevention program, told the committee. Opal is a solution that governments and communities can readily implement. Its use in Central Australia has really taken the pressure off communities and provides a breathing, breathing space where community workers can actually focus on the programs that address the personal and social issues underlying petrol sniffing. When, pet, when sniffing is rife in a community, it is near impossible to do this. The power, violence and dysfunction caused by sniffing is overwhelming. And this is why I have, I have uh, proceeded uh, with introducing this bill as a private member's bill. Because we have spent so long working on this issue as a collective effort to address the issues of petrol sniffing, this is the element that the communities have said is missing from the strategy. They have been lobbying for a long time for this. We have had Senate th three Senate inquiries, and the Senate inquiry in 2009 said that if that found that the Opal program was overwhelmingly successful but identified this gap and said that if, if retailers who are refusing to stock opal fuel or low, low uh, aromatic fuel don't, the government should proceed to mandate uh, the requirement to stock opal fuel. This is why I'm bringing this bill to the chamber, because we, that bill, uh, the government hasn't brought it on, um, because there is overwhelming support, because I was lobbied very heavily by the communities in Central Australia who need this vital element to make sure that they can control petrol sniffing in their communities. And this is also a very powerful tool because, it, because the communities have, have also been lobbying heavy for this, heavily for this. And then they can implement their other youth programs, their diversionary programs, and work to, work to really address the underlying causes of petrol sniffing. This bill will give the minister the power to mandate low aromatic fuel and make it an offence to supply regular fuel in these places. It will also give the minister the power to create fuel control areas by legislative instrument, which will give the minister the capacity to tailor the measures to the particular community after consulting them. Consultation and flexibility are at the heart of these measures because this bill is about helping communities affected by petrol sniffing by complementing the existing strategies and programs that are in place. Consultation, I've got to say, has been a very big part of the development of this bill. This, I believe, has been an effective process. We have taken we developed the bill in consultation and feedback from communities. We, have, we made sure it got referred to the Senate inquiry. We, we sent, we, it has been to a Senate inquiry. We had the overwhelming number of submissions to the Senate inquiry, supported this bill and very strongly endorsed uh, this approach. We've had uh, feedback from uh, the Senate inquiry. We've taken those, that feedback on board and subsequently amending the bills. We have, we have reconsulted again on those uh, on those measures. We've talked to as many of the stakeholders as we, as we possibly can. And as I said, we have received overwhelming support for these particular um, measures. I will discuss the purpose of the amendments um, in, the committee, in the committee stage, but I do want to um, acknowledge that there is some um, that, that a lot of people participated in the Senate inquiry and that um, we are pleased to see the, the proper process for consultation and committee process work here. 
The idea being that when you, in a Senate in, when you bring a bill to the Senate, it goes off to Senate inquiry, you get feedback and you make amendments in, to, in response to that, to that feedback. And so where a bill isn't perfect, you can make amendments to make sure that bill, the bill in response to, to very sensible review and comment process actually reflects the feedback from the community. I will stress again, this bill has the strong support of Aboriginal organisations, of health organisations, community organisations, individuals and communities. They want the minister to have the power to be able to mandate the supply of low aromatic fuel, because it is absolutely critical to dealing with the scourge of petrol sniffing. I have been in communities and seen for myself the impact that taking away sniffable fuel has. And as Kayla said, it provides the window of opportunity for people to be able to get in and deal with the other underlying causes. The other evidence we received to the committee inquiry, because some of the concern was that if you take away sniffable fuel, people will switch to other forms of substance abuse. Well, the evidence, in fact, doesn't support that. The evidence supports the fact that this does provide a window of opportunity to, to give youth in particular another opportunity to address those underlying causes, to have sufficient youth diversionary programs for these, for the, for these youth to actually move completely away from substance abuse. But having this strategy is abs having the capacity to make petrol stations who just pig-headedly refuse to stock opal fuel, it gives, them, it gives the government the capacity, after they have carefully consulted, it gives the government the capacity or the minister the capacity to say, you know what, you really need to stock opal or non-sniffable fuel. Because as the evidence to the committee inquiry overwhelmingly demonstrated, that it's when people can get access to sniffable fuel and run that into communities, it's where you get petrol sniffing outbreaks. Again, the overwhelming evidence shows that, that is in fact the case. And that once somebody starts petrol sniffing in a community, it's very easy to get other kids, petrol, uh, other kids sniffing and then moving on to other communities. As I said, this bill has overwhelming support of the community organisations that we have consulted. We have consulted them extensively and in the bill the minister has, will be required to consult as well. So it's not as if this is something that the minister can willy-nilly apply over the states and territories in Australia. The minister will need to consult under this bill. It is the missing piece to dealing finally with petrol sniffing that, is so that can so dev devastate our communities. Petrol sniffing has largely been in Central Australia, but it does occur and it's increasingly occurring in Northern Northern Territory, in Western Australia, both, both um, around Warburton, we've, I've already talked about Laverton, occurs in some places in the Kimberley. We need the powers for the minister to be able to mandate this where we see this sort of thing happening and where service stations are simply refusing to stock opal. It is not appropriate, it is not good enough that these pig-headed service station owners can undermine the effectiveness of what is such a good program that Australia can rightly hold its head up high and say, we took action to address this particular issue. There are amendments that will be circulated in the chamber that we will talk to in the, in the uh, committee section. I very heavily and strongly commend this bill to the chamber because it's that final link in addressing the issues around petrol sniffing and it has the overwhelming support of the community. I'm absolutely and totally convinced around that issue. Thank you, Senator Seward.